here's a thought. When you come into rowing, you're thinking about wanting to move a boat, and so your focus is almost certainly going to be on the propulsive side of things. I just want to warn you that there are two aspects to a stroke. There's the propulsive bit, and then there's the getting the blade out of the water and getting back up to the next stroke. 80% of your attention and your focus and your training should be on that latter bit. How to get your blade out of the water, how to control the boat, balance it, get it to the next stroke, and then the propulsive bit, much less important. So just be aware of that. It's the bit that's not moving the boat that's the bit you need to focus on. Just a thought. So let's talk about the thorny question of propulsion. It's what everybody seems to be more, most focused on. You get into a boat, you want to move it. Um, most of the people watching this are probably aiming to be at some level competitive. Uh, most of the beginners that I deal with in Oxford, personally, are in fact going on just to enjoy things like touring and stuff like that. But this is going to be the same early stages. But if we're talking about propulsion, as I mentioned elsewhere, it's only about 20% of what you need to focus on. You need to manage a boat before you can move it. Switching on power and starting to move it is only possible when you actually have reasonable technique. You can't row hard until you can row well. So let's just talk about you know, keeping those priorities sorted out. Early stages about managing the boat, keeping stability, getting some predictability, consistency, blah, 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 blah. And then we can talk about... So when we get to the stage of propulsion, how are we going to do it? Okay? Um, on an erg, on a rowing machine, you just pull the handle. The harder you pull it, the faster it goes and stuff like that. And the efficiency doesn't really matter and you just go faster and things happen better. In rowing, you've got to be a lot more subtle about it. Because as we've explained, you put the spoon in the water, you build up big resistance, the spoon isn't going to move, and you're going to leave the boat past that spoon. Okay? So what you do with your body must reflect that. So let's just actually get into the position that we would be in. So we've come forwards, we've found the wall, we've found the shelf. Now, as we place the blade, what's going to happen? We need to build up some sort of resistance. Now, a lot of people talk about just... We want to use our legs because they're the most powerful muscle in our bodies. You know, the glutes are going to be driving the thigh down, which is probably more effective than the quads, which are trying to drive the feet up. Okay? So at this point here, we're going to drive with the legs. But wait, no, no, that's not going to work. Because if you were to do just drive with the legs, the seat moves, but the handle doesn't. Now, if we were to actually think about lifting a weight off the floor, a sort of deadlift type thing in a gym, we would do it in a slightly different way, which is maybe giving us a good example of how it should work. So let's go and have a look at that. So if we're going to try and lift this weight off the floor, let's just compare it to what we're talking about in rowing. We're going to get hold of a handle, and then we're going to load the back, and get tension in the back before we drive with the legs. Okay, that's the way it should work. So what we're trying to do, it happens, happens it needs to happen sort of fluently and at the right time, and this doesn't move until I move. In a boat, the handle starts moving, so I need to be sort of on point for it. So we just place the blade, load the back, drive with the legs, and then do things with other parts of the body. But that first lock on there is a question of loading the back, driving with the legs. Okay, so as we can see, the need is to load the back before we drive with the legs. Often missed out by a lot of coach, coaching videos, not because that they are ignorant, but because the people giving the videos are ex-Olympians or they've forgotten how naturally they load their backs. They don't even think about it. They drive with their legs because they've already loaded their backs. They've got their core firing, everything's all tight and connected and stuff like that. So we have to find a mechanism for loading our backs. And if you're not practiced at weights, lifting um, free weights, then it has to be something you do quite deliberately. Now, the cost of maybe upsetting some coaches, <laughs> yes, I can do that, um, I would suggest that you load your back by actually trying to 
lift your back away from the handle, moving your back away. Now, people would sort of say, but John, that is opening up the body angle, which is not the way it should be done. And I sort of agree with that. However, if you're going to load the back, you need to be moving the back a little bit. But the important thing is to then drive the legs to stop the body from moving. So you've got a situation like this. So imagine this is the body, these are the legs all bent up, and we're going to sort of take the stroke in this direction. We're going to try and open the body like this to load the back, but then drive with the legs so the body can't open up. So it's like a coiled spring. So we can drive with the legs, like that, and then later in the stroke, the body does open up. Now, admittedly, that means that in novices who are learning and practicing, there may be an exaggerated element of opening the body too far too early. But that is better than what they call bum shoving, excuse me, where the seat moves to no effect, which is wasted leg drive. You're using your biggest and most powerful muscles to no effect at all. So loading the back is an essential precursor to propulsion. Okay, so loading the back driving with the legs. Okay, so we've got the placement, which we've been through, and then there's the lock-on. So that's the loading of the back. Load the back, then drive with the legs. Okay, as the handle speed increases, incorporating the body to open up, and at the end we've dealt with the extraction using the arms, not really for propulsion, but just for ma maintaining contact, maintaining control, and negotiating a nice, clean, and timely extraction. Okay, so forward there, load the back, drive with the legs, open the body, finish with the arms, yadi yadi ya. That is how you propel a boat. What's for lunch? <laughs>